So I am going to do a quick talk on 3D visualization with TVTK and Maya V2. Um, the outline is as follows, I am going to introduce basics of visualization. Okay, so I will just do a quick overview of graphics um, and then look at two tools which are very handy for the scientists called Visual and MLab, just two quick demos of those. Um, then go over a graphics primer and then look at how you actually represent data, scientific data for 3D visualization. And then actually get on to the details of VTK, TVTK and Maya V2. So I suspect I will only do the first part this morning. <coughs> so the question is what is visualization? Like, so what we are looking to do here is to make some visible representation of data. And typically we are looking at scientific data. <coughs> and what we are really interested in is in cross platform 2D and 3D visualization for scientists and engineers. Now most of 2D plotting itself like as we saw in the demo of matplotlib can be done very well by matplotlib and Chaco. So if you want really interactive plots um, with all the power of traits and a very nice convenient object oriented model you would want to use Chaco. But all of these can be done with matplotlib and Chaco. However, if you have things that are more complex, that are not 2D plots, that are not simple scatter plots, so if you are looking to say slice through some 3D volume of data, you want to do volume rendering, you have a 3D data set that you want to contour, you have an unstructured grid, you have more complicated things that you want to visualize, it is not enough if you have matplotlib or Chaco. So you need something that does it in 3D. And unfortunately, it is not as easy as PyLab makes it. Okay, so it is not yet that easy, we are hoping that we will eventually get there and make it as easy as we can for the average scientist. Now yes, there is a lot of work, lot of research, lot of code that lets you visualize 3D data, it is there, huge amounts of code. The problem is most scientists and engineers are not really interested in learning how to do visualization and typically they do need to get their jobs done as soon as possible. And they are busy. So it is not easy. Most scientists you look at really have their own things to do. They have their own algorithms to write. They are looking at the physics or some particular detail of a problem they are interested in. And expecting a scientist to really be a master of 3D visualization is, is just too much. And if you look at the way matplotlib works, none of us, most users of matplotlib do not really know how it works underneath. They do not know that it uses an ag or it uses uh, GTK or what are the primitives that it actually draws. They just say, hey, there is this data, please plot it and it is plotted. So the goal is to eventually get to a point where you make it as easy as possible to do the basic things. And if there is something that is beyond that, that you make it doable. So two layers, one layer where you say the basic scientist can do most of his, 90 percent of his tasks on the basic tool set and that is very easy to do. And on top of that you have or you have a more sophisticated object model where you can do more sophisticated things. But we are not there yet but we will hopefully get there. So given this there are a couple of tools that have been developed in the recent past which I am going to just show you to give you a kind of like a primer and a show. These are visual and MLab. Okay. So visual is basically based on what is called vPython's visual. There is a tool, there is a library, Python library called vPython which lets you create 2D, sorry 3D graphics very easily. And you are not talking of graphics at the level of OpenGL with that level of uh, power, you are talking of very simple things. You want to create a sphere, you want to be able to move that sphere, you want to create a small ring and you want to create a small thing where you can demo physics applications. So you say here is a ball that is bouncing. It is nice to be able to say here is a ball that is bouncing but it is a completely different thing when you actually have it on a computer that is actually doing a simulation. It is very nice to be able to show that. So vPython lets you do that. But the problem with vPython is it uses OpenGL and it also uh, cannot be quite used in the framework of traits and all of the other stuff that we have. Not that easy to do, it can be used. 
So, um, Rashid Beg, a student of mine, actually created a, he basically took the Visual Python API and recreated it using TVTK. And there are slight differences from vPython. And this basically works nicely from IPython minus W thread and it uses traits. The difficulty is it's, it's, it's kind of a, it's just been built recently. It's a lot slower than vPython. But it does offer some very neat capabilities. Here, for example, is the example code of how to create the scene you see on the right. I'll show you a demo of this. All you're doing here is you're creating a sphere, setting it as a, at a position and you're saying the color is red. You're creating another sphere here, position at 1, 0, 0 with a different color and you create a box here. You can get more complex, you can now create now an animation. And here what I've done is I just create a box which is the left wall, a right wall here which is another box and the sphere is sitting here between these two. And now I set the ball to have the current time. I create an attribute called t time, time level is 0 and I say a dt is 0.5 over here. This is a silly application but just bear with me. And I set the velocity of this ball to be a vector. Vector is basically a convenience class wrapped around numpy arrays. It's a 3 vector. So you say vector dot x, it will give you the x component. The idea is to mimic the vPython API. And then we have an animation function which basically says increment the ball's time and then move the ball such that the next position of the ball is position of the ball plus velocity times delta t. And then if the ball exceeds the sides, you reverse the sign of the motion. So it's a perfect reflection. And then in the last line here you say iterate this. So call this animation function such that the user interface is not blocked and you can use this. Similarly, you can do things like create a curve. So there's a nice example which actually shows the Lorenz attractor. It's a pretty animation. So this is another example where you can actually create a curve. I've just created a simple spiral. Again, look at the code. Most of it is just setting up the data. And this one line says here are the bunch of points which set up this curve and it will set up a curve. So this is very convenient when you want to sort of show simple demos and things like that. The other thing is there is something called tvtk.tools.mlab and I am not going to really show you demos of this right away. But here you get to do more complicated visualizations. There you just created simple primitives like a ball and a, uh, a ellipsoid, you can create a box, you can create and move things around or you can create a curve and things like that. But real, in reality, you have things like, for example, two days back, we did an example of the sync function, right? Or you take the Lina case and you want to say, let's say you want to see a 3D surface of that. You want to see a carpet plot of your Bessel function. How would you do that? You can't do that with visual. The way you do that is to use MLab. And what it does is it provides very convenient, less like PyLab provides plot, scatter, things like that. Py, MLab tries to provide one-liners, so you can get these things done very quickly. And the API that I've used in this case is what's called the, there's, there's a tool called OctaViz, which is built for Octave. And I just mimic the API because it's used. And what it lets you do is various things. It can set, uh, you can create glyphs at various points, which is, for example, at every point in this room, I could show a cone with a particular direction the direction being the direction of the flow in that room. Um, you can take 3D lines just like the one visual does. You can plot a mesh, a surface um, and other things. So here is a simple example which actually shows you a surface defined like so. So look at the f of x here. It basically says it is sine of x plus y plus sine of x 2x minus y plus cosine of 3x plus 4y. And x and y are simply arrays. And I want this to basically map out an entire region. So what happens is the surf regular takes these two, does an axis change, just like in the sync example. You change the axis, so you broadcast the array and you get an entire mesh. And it evaluates this function on each of those points. 
then so this basically shows you it adds this surface and shows it with contours. So here I have done two things. I have shown you the API by which you can add it and then pop it. So what the pop command does here is once you add a particular visualization, so let us do this, let us do an example. Oops. So if you notice here, it is exactly the same code. Now what I am going to do is, I am just going to call it for now. What you see here is a nice 3D surface with contours. Okay. But we are running out of time, so what I am, uh, okay, so let me spend a little time on this. So the way MLab works is the following. So let us say I want to create, if you look at the code up there, all you do is you say from tvt from nthought tvtk.tools import mlab. Now I say mlab.figure, does not this remind you of pylab.figure, it is the same thing or similar thing and you get a basic figure with which you can interact and create things on that. Now if you say oops ok I am going to be bad so now let us say I define f x y sine of x plus y and now I am going to create two arrays Now I am going to create a surface. So I say mlab dot surf regular with contours x, y and sample the function f and it is generated the contours and stuff but I want to view it on this guy. The way you do that is you say fig or f which is my figure, oops. Oops, so what I did was I lost my figure. So I am going to close it. I will say fig is mlab dot figure. We have a figure. I say fig dot add s. And there you go. Now I want to remove it. I can say fig dot pop. It is gone. So what the example over here showed you. just that API. Oops. Yeah. So this basically just showed you that you can actually pop out the last figure. But the other thing you notice here is this is fully interactive window. On the left you have what is called a pipeline browser. So what happens is MLab underneath uses what is called VTK, we will talk about that in the afternoon and VTK has what what is called a pipeline architecture. So it, you set up a pipeline in order to do a visualization and what this lets you do is it lets you configure that by looking at the pipeline as a tree. So now if I go on this, I could actually go double click it and change the properties for example. Uh, 
you notice now it's changed to a wireframe. I changed that from the user interface on the left. So basically, this gives you a pipeline interface, pipeline browser, where you can actually go and edit things if you really want to change certain specific properties that the command line didn't let you do. And then if you click on save, just like in um, PyLab, you can save this to an image and use that. Or if you want to see a full view, you can view it in um, full screen. Various ways by which you can set the view to what you want. So this is the basics of um, PyLab, sorry, MLab. And there is a lot more sophisticated functionality. For example, I want to show this particular surface. Anybody have an idea of what this is? It is a spherical harmonic. So here is the data that is being generated. And just look at the two lines that are used to generate the data. It is just three lines of code that plot this data for you. So you are given a surface, a bunch of points, it actually generates the thing and visualize it for you. So if you say mlab dot test surf, so I've, it's already there in the mlab example, so I'm not going to type it out. If I say f is fig, and then I say mlab test surf, there you have it. Now this is a very large number of polygons, so it actually, when I rotate it, it automatically down samples and goes to a point like representation, so you can rotate interactively. And again, you have the interactive pipeline browser that you can use. So that's kind of the idea of MLab. Basically, it makes doing visualizations, just like PyLab, easier. And there are more examples in the source code, which show you how you can do different things. Now, instead of using TVTK, TVTK is like a raw tool. It's like a library. I'd like to be able to use Mayavi because Mayavi offers me a lot of nice convenient functionality. So what we've done recently is to create an MLab for Mayavi itself, which means with one line I can do a plot just like we did with TVTK MLab and use Mayavi at the back end. So I can actually use the full-fledged user interface of Mayavi, set up new things, delete things, do what I want, construct more sophisticated uh, visualizations. But the trouble is this interface is still under development. It does work. It does do quite a few useful things, but it is still under heavy development. And in fact, uh, Gael Vahokwa is helping with development of this. In fact, he's driving lots of the development on the mailing list with this. And I'm not, I don't have the time to keep up with him. So here's another quick example of how this same thing runs with Mayavi tools MLab. So here what we've done is I've, I've purposefully shown you different examples in the previous MLab and in this. Again here all I've done is created a data set with X arrays. This is just another array. And I'm saying U and V velocities are simply cosine of X, sine of X. Um, M grid basically does generates a mesh grid, okay, which basically creates a mesh of points with the right x values and the y values. And here, what we do here is we basically calculate the velocities and this is a 2D plot of the velocity vectors. We could do it in 3D, but the 3D plot actually looks quite messy. So what I will show you now is So you just need to say from mthot.mayavi.tools import mlab and then you can say mlab.quiver x, y, w, u, v, w. Okay. In this case, we are doing only 2D. Now this example is already built in. So if you say mlab.test quiver 3D, 2D data, that's what it does. I've just listed that out on the left there. So let's call it and see what you get. I hope it doesn't do, it works. And there you have it. And note that this is done in Mayavi. So 
I have all the features of Maya V at my disposal. I have my data, I can configure objects, change for example, right now it is using arrows. You see the arrows? I want to change the arrows to something else. It will do that. So now I have the power of Maya V and I have the capability of being able to pop up a plot with a couple of lines of one line of a few lines of code. Okay. And notice that my interpreter is still completely active. So there is another example Quiver 3D which does the same thing in 3D and as you can see it looks like a mess because it is a 3D collection of points but you can actually go in <laughs> and see something. But you get the idea. The CLF function clears the screen so you basically get back an empty screen only. It is just like PyLab's CLF, no difference. So the idea is in the future we are trying to see if we can make MLab just as easy to use as PyLab. So you can actually just one line plots, you want to do a scatter, things like that. It is not there yet. So here is another example of an isosurface. You see here. So this is another test and that is it. All of the code you see on the top here is just setting up the data and this simply takes contours. And this one line generates an outline, the last line just resets the view so it is sitting nicely. So we run it there you have it and these are actually slices that you can slice with so you can look at your data interactively. 